Okay, now that we've got angular velocity, let's consider angular momentum, which, just like linear momentum, is a vector in 3D. Here is a definition at the elemental level. The angular momentum element, dl, of a mass element, dm, is the vector r cross v times dm. To get the full angular momentum vector, that is, L, you integrate this element over the entire body. So another way to express this is that the angular momentum element is really the cross product of the position vector, R, with the linear momentum element, V, times dm. Now you gotta be a little careful here. It would seem as though, as this depends on the position vector R, you have to be careful. It depends on the origin of your coordinate frame. Okay, so given that, to relate it to the angular velocity, we're going to take this expression, dl equals r cross v dm, and then we're going to substitute in for v what we know it to be equal to, that is omega cross r. So dl is r cross omega cross r times dm. Now we can expand that out as r dot r times omega minus r dot omega times r, all of that times dm. Now that last step may be a little unfamiliar to you. It follows from a standard vector identity for cross products of cross products that you may want to go back and verify if you're curious. If not, then just stick with what we have, namely that dl is r dot r omega minus r dot omega r, all of that times dm. Now we're going to take that and expand it out by explicitly writing out the components of the position vector. r is equal to x, y, and z, and then writing out explicit components for the angular velocity vector, omega sub x, omega sub y, and omega sub z. Now comes now comes the unpleasant part, because we have to substitute all of these into the angular momentum element formula. Now when we do that, we're gonna get something that's, that's kind of long and complicated. The r dot r is going to give you things of the form x squared plus y squared plus z squared. The r dot omega terms are gonna give you things of the form x omega x plus y omega y plus z omega z. Now there's a lot of uh, of stuff going on here in this expression. But if we uh, factor things out, if we combine terms and factor out the omega x, the omega y, and the omega z terms, then we start to see a pattern in what is developing. All of these quadratic terms kind of look familiar, and we see that dl is really di, that is the inertia element times omega times the angular velocity. So this is really cool. If we integrate both sides, then we get that L is really I times omega. It's the product of the inertia matrix with the angular velocity vector. That's a nice example of matrix vector multiplication showing up in the definition of angular momentum. Now, what does this mean? Well, let's take a look at an explicit example. Let's say that we've got a rectangular prism. Let's keep it explicit, side lengths two, three, and four along x, y, and z. Let's keep it simple. Let's say unit density. Now, in the past, we have computed what the inertia matrix for such an object is. And in this explicit case, it's equal to the diagonal matrix with diagonal entries uh, three squared plus four squared, 2 squared plus 4 squared, and 2 squared plus 3 squared, all of that times the scalar 2 times 3 times 4 over 12. Expanding that out, we get the diagonal matrix with entries 50, 40, and 26. Now, if we rotate this rectangular prism about an axis through the center of mass using an angular velocity vector omega, then the angular momentum L is the vector with components 50 times omega x, 40 times omega y, and 26 times omega z. That's 
That's a simple computation. But let's observe, unless you are rotating about one of the three principal axes, the x, y, or z axis, then the angular momentum vector is not pointing along the axis of rotation. The angular momentum and the angular velocity are not parallel vectors. Why? It's all about matrix vector multiplication.